I actually feel a little nervous. I have so many thoughts in my head and I don't know where to start. And as you guys know, it has been some time since I have been on camera. So this is kind of weird for me as well. So I just wanted to have a quick chat to you guys and bring you up to speed on where I've been for the last year because obviously I haven't been uh, on camera and I haven't been behind the camera either. So I've taken a big step back from our YouTube channel, from everything. And I think before we start this new chapter of our lives, which is imminent, and I don't know if you can see behind me, <laughs> there's a marina. And guess what's in the marina? Can you actually see the masts there? I'm not sure. Anyway, take it from me. Our boat is literally like 200 meters away, which is crazy. Haven't been on board yet. That's tomorrow. But before we start that new chapter of our lives, I wanted to and the, the new chapter of Sailing Ruby Rose as well. I think that um, this episode marks a real turning point in, you know, the content on our channel. And before uh, we embark on all of that, I wanted to just sit down with you and I guess bring you up to speed on where I've been and what's been happening behind the scenes with me because I have been checking the comments uh, not as regularly as I used to because I've, as I said, tried to take a step, well, I've had to take a step back. But I have been um, jumping on every now and again and looking at the comments and there's always one or two or three or four saying, where's Teresa? We miss her and I really appreciate those comments. But unfortunately there's also been some comments um, that have kind of made their way to me about speculating on why I haven't been on camera. And I've spent two minutes and 20 seconds um, procrastinating now and I'm just going to get on with it because yeah, I want to talk to you guys about where I've been and why I haven't been around. And um, it's not for, well, I don't know what you think, but I don't think it's for the reasons you think. So I want to just rewind a little bit and go back to this time last year, about a year ago, about a year and a half ago, let's say. And Nick and I were in Vietnam and we were being told that the boat was only a few months away from being completed. And we decided to go back to the UK and uh, mostly because our visas had expired and we had to leave the country and then come back in. And we thought, well, since we have to leave the country anyway, we might as well go back to London. We had some affairs that we had to put in order there and uh, then we'll come back um, to Vietnam. And it started to become clear that the boat was going to be delayed a little bit further um, than we had been told. And I was starting to get really burnt out, frankly. Uh, being in Vietnam, I love Vietnam just to put that out there. I think the country is absolutely amazing. But for me, my experience in Ho Chi Minh City was um, quite lonely and frustrating and stressful because I basically found myself living in our apartment and feeling very isolated. I didn't really leave the apartment during the day because of the heat and uh, I just found it more physically comfortable to be inside, you know, in the air conditioning. But that started to turn into a bit of a habit of me just never leaving the apartment except to go to the factory. And when we went to the factory, it started to become clear to us that the boat build was going to take far longer than we had anticipated. And that was a source of stress as well. And Nick was really loving his time in Vietnam because he was learning the language and he was really... Um, making an attempt to integrate into the culture and he also uh, started to see a pathway to volunteering as a dentist in Vietnam so he, he was kind of being fulfilled by a lot of different um, kind of things whereas I didn't have any of that and I just started to feel um, restless and when we went back to London and it was time for us to go back Nick said to me look you know why don't you just stay here for a little bit longer and I'll go back and I'll film and then I'll send you the footage and then you can do the editing and I'm like, uh, okay, <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm pretty um, possessive of the camera. I don't really trust the camera to anyone. But I said to Nick, okay, well, if you think you can, if you can film, then that'd be great. Um, and yeah, we'll see how that goes. And he said, look, I promise that I'll do a good job. And so I, I, that's what we started doing. And we thought that it would only be maybe a month, maybe two, where that would be our um, set up, our workflow, when Nick would film, he'd send the footage to me and I'd edit and that would be that. But I went back to Vietnam in uh, July and that's where the wheels started to come off that plan, to be honest, because 
yeah. I was just really um, not happy with spending so much time uh, in the factory filming the build because I personally, even though I have a vested interest obviously in the build of this boat, it wasn't the content that I was particularly passionate about. And I don't think that that comes as a surprise to anyone. Um, and I really, Nick and I had, I guess, a different view on that where he was really interested um, in the boat build and filming the boat build and getting really involved and he found it fascinating um, to see the whole process whereas I was I found it less fascinating <laughs> to put it mildly and I was also feeling quite um I don't know I was feeling stressed because and I think that I don't want to be too I don't want to complain because um we are, at the end of the day, ridiculously fortunate, and I have perspective on that, don't worry. But on the back of, and I don't want to talk about COVID because no one wants to talk about COVID anymore, but on the back of um, two and a half years by that point of being in limbo in so many different ways, uh, I was really over this continued state of limbo for, for me and Nick. Um, cause it's, it felt like the boat build delays were really just prolonging this state of limbo that we had already been in for the previous two and a half years because we didn't have a home. The boat Ruby Rose was our home. We sold her in 2020, in September in 2020. And therefore we had been without a home for two years by this point. And that was really starting to affect my just general happiness and contentment. I was at the end of my tether, you know, and you know, when like you, you kind of dealt with a lot of stress and those um your resilience just gets worn down and something that you could have dealt with in like different circumstances at a different time of your life suddenly you just can't deal with anymore and i just got to the point where COVID had stressed everyone in the world out um it was compounded uh by the fact that we had no home of our own so we were like living with family and it locked down with family and all that kind of stuff i don't want to revisit that to be honest i don't think anyone does i'd, I'd kind of reached the end of what I could deal with, frankly. And being in Vietnam and, and going to the factory every week and, and kind of being confronted with the slower than expected boat build every week was uh, not doing my mental health any good. The fact that I was creating content out of the boat build, which I was not particularly enthusiastic about, quite frankly, um, was not doing me any good. And I just kind of had to get out of there. So Nick said, look, go to Australia, spend time with your family. Um, he couldn't come because you know he had to look after the channel. And that was another uh, area that Nick and I had a slight difference of opinion because I was keen for us to, I don't know, charter a boat or do something different and, and create content, like a different kind of content. But the problem with just, um, kind of making that decision and committing to that is that we never really knew when our boat would be ready. And so we were always kind of thinking, well, it's only going to be a few more months. It's only going to be a few more months. We can hang on for a few more months. And of course, that few more months stretched out significantly but we didn't know at the time so it was kind of really hard to make these interim plans when you don't know how long that interim period is going to be so I went back to Australia and that helped a lot um, and you know well I've been back in Australia since July last year so up until now <laughs> up until two days ago and it's taken me about a year to kind of um, be ready to get back on camera, to get back on the boat. I mean, the boat has taken a year to be ready anyway, but it's really kind of taken me a while to settle down, to be honest, because yeah, I was, I was stressed. I was, I was worn out, I was burnt out. While you guys were inquiring after my well-being, um, we were kind of replying saying, oh look, Teresa can't get a visa to come into Vietnam, which is actually true. I, I could have only had a tourist visa at, at that point. I could have only, um, gotten a tourist visa to go into Vietnam and that would have only given me 30 days and they were cracking down on the kind of visa runs so I couldn't have just kept on like going to the Cambodian border and coming back on the same day so um the logistics did play a role although a small one because I was that wasn't really something that I was prepared to do anyway I want to make it very 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 clear that um I consider my circumstances and our circumstances to be incredibly fortunate you know I have perspective I 
fully understand that having our incredible, beautiful, luxurious catamaran delayed by like a year is hardly like the worst thing in the world. I mean, you know, come on, people are really, I think it's been particularly over the last few years and at the moment, people are really struggling, really, really struggling. And um... Right, battery just ran out on the camera and um, so I guess that's my cue to wrap this up. This is my phone. You've got to do what you've got to do. Nick, in his wisdom, packed all of our camera equipment into the boxes which are now on the boat and we can't access the boat. So I can't, we can't access our cameras. So therefore, I've got this like little ZV-1 that clearly, I don't know, the battery was full like a few minutes ago. Maybe the battery's dying. I don't know. God, I hope not. Um, anyway, and my phone. So yeah, phone it is. Look, as I was saying before, I was really cut off by my battery running out. Um, I have perspective and Nick and I are very, 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 very lucky. I've got a lot of mixed emotions about it because I was really settled in Australia. I have my family there, I've got my little niece there and I was in a real, real little routine but I was also at the same time so restless and so um, kind of just this sense of, this prolonged sense of waiting and anticipation. So I've been waiting for this for so long and now it's here. I mean, you know, you can see the masks behind me, she's literally there that I just feel like it's a bit of a dream to be honest. I just feel like it's quite surreal that um, tomorrow we're gonna get up bright and early and walk over there and we're gonna step on board Ruby Rose too and we're gonna embark on the next big chapter of our lives. And I think that it feels a little bit like um, back in 2015 when we moved on board Ruby Rose and it was just this huge upheaval and this big lifestyle change. It's not quite as um, seismic as it, it was then because that was like literally you know proper lifestyle change really jumping into the unknown this time around we know what we're getting ourselves into but there's definitely a sense of um end of one chapter beginning of another and it's going to be huge and you know this boat oh I, I haven't seen her yet but she is she is the embodiment of our dreams and our plans for the future and you know I think that the sailing adventures that we're going to have on, have on her are going to be basically all the things that we never got to do with Ruby Rose and there is a long list and that is why we bought Ruby Rose too, that is why we wanted a big-ish, not that big, catamaran um, because there was so much more that we wanted to do and so much more that we wanted to see and we wanted to be able to do that with a little bit more comfort. We wanted to be able to have a, a faster boat so we'd you know, spend more time at our destination um, and less time on route to our destination. We wanted to be able to have family over, friends over, patrons over. And now you know, we've got this boat just sitting there after all this time. She's finished, she's finished. And I, I actually at times never, I mean, I knew that this day would eventually come, but I, it felt at times like it really wouldn't ever come, that I was just gonna be waiting for the rest of my life for this boat. I just can't wait. Do you know what I can't wait for? I just can't wait to be at anchor, our first night at anchor on off some beautiful Thai island, which is probably like somewhere nearby, and just go to bed to the sound of the little, like the water lapping against the hull and then wake up in the morning when the sun's rising and just make a coffee and go out to the foredeck and sit down and just take it all in and just think we are back cruising at last. That is what I can't wait for. It's been a long time coming. I will see you next week with next week's episode uh, where we're doing handover. So next week we'll be taking handover of Ruby Rose 2. That is gonna be a very intense few days. I hope that you guys are as excited to have me back as I am to be back and uh, apologies for the technical difficulties. That won't be the last time, I'm sure. Subscribe, give me a comment down below, and um, yeah, I'll, now that the wind's picking up, I will see you next week.